It's not unusual to be nervous before your wedding, but in the case of medical assistant Jennifer Carol Wilbanks, things were not so simple. In 2005, Wilbanks made headlines when she disappeared just days before her elaborate wedding in Duluth, Georgia. As her wide-eyed, unforgettable image lingers in pop culture, the drama of her story is forever marked by weirdness, chaos, and complicated legal consequences. Today, we're sharing the story of Jennifer Carol Wilbanks, the real-life runaway bride who faked her kidnapping. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. Feel free to leave a comment and let us know what other tales of love gone wrong you would like to hear about. Okay, time to hit the road. The story of the runaway bride unfolds like a made-for-TV drama, or Gone Girl crossed with Waiting for Godot. Waiting for Gone Girl? On an unassuming day in April of 2005, a woman tells her fiancé she's going out for a jog. Hours pass and she doesn't return. The panicked husband files a missing persons report, resulting in an epic media circus. Though the media could make a circus out of a dropped feather. The recent memory of the 2002 Lacey Peterson case, where Lacey's husband Scott was convicted of her murder, almost immediately made Will Banks' fiancé, John Mason, a suspect in her alleged kidnapping, in the court of public opinion anyway. The bride-to-be's friends spoke to the media, hoping for her safe return and pleading with the kidnappers for her safe return. But their pleas were made irrelevant by happenstance, because sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. Following Wilbank's disappearance, the city of Duluth, Georgia organized a massive search party, and they spared no expense. The city spent between $40,000 and $60,000 looking for her, with over 250 people desperately searching for clues to her disappearance. And the relentless media coverage even sparked a nationwide search. Her friends and family held a vigil for her on her original wedding day, in the same church where the wedding was supposed to have taken place. They also issued a $100,000 reward for information about her disappearance. Will Banks turned up a few days after her disappearance in Albuquerque, New Mexico, calling Mason from a 7-Eleven payphone and telling him, I don't even know where I am. But it was enough for the authorities to reunite Will Banks with her family, prompting a public expression of gratitude for all of the media attention and for everyone's help that led to her safe return. Wonderful news all around, right? Well, somehow, the bride's reappearance made everything even stranger. When Will Banks emerged from hiding, she relayed a harrowing story of what she had been through for the past several days. She told Albuquerque police she'd been kidnapped while jogging in Duluth by a white woman and a Hispanic man, who had assaulted her in a van. She was very thorough in her statements and provided a lot of detail, describing how they kept her trapped on the floor of their van, tied up with rope, what music they played on the radio, the man's poor dental hygiene, and the woman's imposing physical stature. Will Banks painted a vivid picture that suggested escape was virtually impossible, making it all the more miraculous that she'd managed to get away to be reunited with her family and friends. The only problem was, none of her story was true. Hearing Will Banks' account of her ordeal would send chills down anyone's spine. When the FBI got involved, however, her entire story changed because lying to the FBI also sends chills down your spine. After being interrogated by federal agents, Will Banks admitted that there hadn't been any bad guys, or even a kidnapping. Instead, she was merely a panicked bride with the most extreme case of cold feet, more like hypothermic feet, who withdrew $49 from her bank account and jumped on a Vegas-bound Greyhound bus before resurfacing in New Mexico. Will Banks needed a breath to deal with the pressures of her wedding, and to see if she was even in the right frame of mind to get married. These are all reasonable thoughts to have when you are about to get married. It's just that most of us try to work through them without staging a kidnapping and getting the FBI involved. Then, on April 29, 2005, T minus 24 hours to her wedding bells, she called her fiancé to tell him her fabricated abduction story, before immediately caving in in front of the gosh darn Federal Bureau of Investigation, whose whole job is investigating. It's right there in the name. When it became clear that Will Banks hadn't been abducted, she faced legal consequences. And while Albuquerque police elected not to charge her, in Georgia, she was charged with a felony for making false information to law enforcement and a misdemeanor for filing a false police report. Dang, Georgia, none of that was in the Ray Charles song. 
Maximum punishment for the felony charge alone was five years in prison. Authorities also wanted her to pay a $43,000 fine to cover a portion of what it cost to search for her. Duluth Mayor Shirley Lassiter said that the case gave her mixed emotions and openly wondered about Will Banks' actions, saying, For every behavior, there's going to be some type of justification. So how did it all shake out? Will Banks' lawyer offered a compromise deal that saw her pay $13,000 to Duluth instead of $43,000. Huh, sounds like a hell of an attorney. She pleaded no contest to the charges, which is essentially saying, I'm not pleading guilty, but I recognize you have enough evidence to convict me, and had to complete 250 hours of community service. After dealing with the media circus and coming clean about her ruse, Will Banks admitted herself to an inpatient medical program. Her family's Gainesville, Georgia church said this was to address physical and mental issues which, she believes, played a major role in her running from herself. On May 5, 2005, she released a public apology that read in part, Those who know me know how excited I've been and how excited I was about the spectacular wedding we planned and how I could not wait to be Mrs. John Mason. In my mind, it was never about the timing, however unfortunate. I was simply running from myself and from certain fears controlling my life. Each day I am understanding more about who I am and the issues that influence me to respond inappropriately. Therefore, I have started professional treatment voluntarily. Now you might think that this would be the end of the story. But Will Banks' public admission of wrongdoing, voluntary treatment of her issues, and literal sentencing from our justice system didn't stop others from speculating about her condition. Not when there's airtime to fill. On Anderson Cooper's May 2nd, 2005 broadcast, Cooper dedicated a segment of the show to The Runaway Bride, during which Cooper's CNN co-worker, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, decided to speculate about Will Banks' state of mind, which is generally considered irresponsible for a medical professional to do. He told the audience that Will Banks might have suffered from Graves' disease, a disorder that causes an overactive thyroid gland. Gupta speculated this disease caused the wild look in her eyes in the pictures that had been shared with the media. And other symptoms include hyperactivity, irritability, and an increased heartbeat. Could these factors have played a part in Will Banks' decision? Eh, maybe. Gupta never personally met nor treated Jennifer Wilbanks so everything he suggested is pure speculation. Gupta also believed she was under extreme stress while planning the wedding, which doesn't exactly take a doctor to figure out, and that the stress compounded until her fight or flight response took over. And between these two, we all know which one she picked. One side effect of being the center of a public media frenzy is that all your dirty laundry is going to find its way onto TV. And it was no different for Will Banks. It turned out she was arrested several times throughout the 90s for shoplifting and theft, even spending two weekends in jail. Her shoplifting offenses totaled a little over $100 the first time, most of which was from Walmart. The second offense was much larger, totaling $1,740 from a local mall. So like two pairs of sneakers from Foot Locker. She was originally charged with a felony, but those charges were dropped after she completed a pretrial diversion program, which included community service. She's managed to do quite a bit of community service over the years. Maybe we should all send her a card. On top of all this, she'd also been engaged before, but did not marry. And while she literally didn't run away from that man and pretend to get abducted, she did end the engagement abruptly over the phone. Ouch. And speaking of broken engagements, some engagements are built to last. Others crumble like sandcastles the instant one partner fakes their own kidnapping to get out of the wedding. In the case of Wilbanks and Mason, it's, uh, the latter. The two officially called off their engagement on May 17, 2005, which was probably a good move for both of them. One year later, Wilbanks sued Mason for $500,000. Wilbanks alleged that she was owed this money over a house Mason purchased with the money acquired from the rights to a book deal of Wilbanks' story, a deal made by Mason when Wilbanks was heavily medicated. Wilbanks was also seeking punitive damages because Mason had power of attorney over their joint finances during the engagement, and she believed he misused their funds. Mason, as folks who are sued often do, filed a countersuit, but both lawsuits were dropped in December 2006 without any real resolution. Claude Mason, John's father, said that terms can't be disclosed. They signed a non-disclosure agreement, but John is happy, and I think both sides are happy. NDAs, stopping us from getting good gossip since at least 2006. 
Both Mason and Wilbanks eventually got married. To other people, that is. Although Wilbanks divorced her husband in 2021. Reflecting on the story in 2017, Albuquerque Police Sergeant Trish Hoffman told People Magazine, In the big picture, who did it really hurt? Her and her family. I hope they're in a better place than they were back then. But the thing about pop culture is that it never truly forgets anything. If the actions of the runaway bride weren't wild enough, hustling opportunists took things to a completely different level. One person made a Wilbanks-inspired hot sauce that claimed to cure cold feet. It was called Jennifer's High Talent Hot Sauce. Hmm, spicy and clever. Another entrepreneur made an action figure. The toy came with jogging pants and a t-shirt that read, Vegas, baby. The doll also had a striped towel that resembled the one Wilbanks used to cover her face during the media frenzy. In other words, we have a casting suggestion if Julia Roberts doesn't want to come back for Runaway Bride 2. So what do you think? Do you remember when the Runaway Bride story hit the news? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.